looks that way. Again? Now what? He's got a rocket launcher! You can't be serious! This guy's carrying trouble. We need to destroy that weapon. How can we take that thing out? It looks like that did the trick. Even he couldn't survive that. It looks that way. He survived that? Aim for that barrel and back. Feeling it wouldn't be that easy. All right, you want me? Come and get me. You can't shoot with those tentacles in the way.
There it is. Uh, all those people. Thus, Raccoon City vanished from the map. However, not everything disappeared with the town's annihilation. The nightmare would continue over the next few years as the survivors fought on. Ah, oh, Nemesis, you were too good for this world. A baddie so amazing that Capcom named an entire game out of him, and from my early impressions of Resident Evil 3, he seems to be the kind of recurring bad guy who just daunts you at every turn that would get people a lot invested in his character arc. But the problem is that Nemesis's sections were more designed with that whole trying to be a scary video game in mind and it just ended up being really annoying and stupid. Because a lot of what Nemesis does is that he just moves too damn fast and you end up just taking bullshit damage because you're trying to move from point A to point B. So maybe Umbrella Chronicles has a little bit going for it but I would suspect that anything that Umbrella Chronicles does is under serving the original source material. Here we have Nemesis, who is being fought on the roof of the police building now that Jill and Carlos are being back for, I assume, some sort of escape. Either that or the zombie horde just chased him to the roof somehow. And the boss fight here is incredibly daunting and amazingly complicated. I died a few times during this Nemesis final boss fight. First of all, it takes goddamn ages to get through it. Just like the Gravedigger that preceded it, the Nemesis boss fight suffers from the attack pattern being too repetitive and Nemesis only being vulnerable on his own terms. It's incredibly hard to nearly impossible to actually stun him to get any consistent damage, and the attacks that he throws out are just bullshit to the extreme. Starting with his tentacle burying attack. If you let the tentacle burrowing attack finish what it's supposed to do, and don't end up shooting the tentacles as they are in the ground, then you end up having to deal with a bunch of impossible to hit, too fast to hit, tentacles that end up damaging you over and over and over again with nothing that you can do about it, which is just as bullshit as it goes. And I know I complained about this in a couple of other Capcom boss fights. The, the proto-tyrant from Resident Evil Zero was the last time that I remember complaining about this. But giving us the opportunity to dodge or destroy an attack before it hits us, and then having that ability be complete bullshit is just a complete dick move. If you're going to give us the opportunity, then we should have at least a decent chance at avoiding it altogether. Like what they do with Paper Mario games before those were ruined. Ultimately, Nemesis is just a giant pain in the ass that doesn't really evolve as it takes damage, doesn't really build up, doesn't really go anywhere, and his attack repertoire is just full of bullshit. Very badly explained attacks, very badly implemented attacks, the whole roster that he has is just a complete mess. From his burrowing tentacles, to his jump attacks, to his simple punches. Thankfully, he doesn't seem to have the rocket launcher anymore, or if he does, it's in a limited capacity to what it was in both Resident Evil 3 and the earlier section where he fought him. And he was basically doing the same thing except slightly better on terms because you had a lot of chances to shoot his rockets, but the problem is that, again, Capcom takes away your camera control, so you don't know which way the screen is flying and you end up just losing time to take out the attack because Capcom is trying to be helpful but it doesn't explain anything about what the heck the camera is going to do next so you can't plan for it. And then the ultimate insult is that the way that Nemesis died after being blown up with his own rocket launcher, exploded twice, is that he just falls off a building. Like seriously? At least William Birkin got through the full gamut of his evolution by the end of Resident Evil 2. Did Nemesis seriously have to fall off a building to die? Or could he have been just rocket launchered into giblets like both the tyrant monsters from Resident Evil and Resident Evil 2? At least give him a dignified death. He doesn't have to die off screen in a nuke attack. 
that's just underserving this guy, but I'm assured that Umbrella Chronicles, even though I haven't finished Resident Evil 3 at the time I'm talking, is just being underserved again by Umbrella Chronicles and not being as epic as it's supposed to be. But then again, when Capcom wants to start doing things loud, intense, and crazy off the wall, that can sometimes just add up to being arbitrarily difficult and stupidly designed in a survival horror game. You walk a real fine line in a survival horror game of trying to develop a challenging monster. I can't really think of one that I've fallen completely in love with in a survival horror game that off the top of my head. And just to keep this short, they seem to either be incredibly too high difficulty wise stemming from stuff that you couldn't see coming or just badly designed for the genre attacks or elements or stuff. Or they just end up being babies first easy and you end up asking why the hell did you bother doing this in the first? Or the classic third option being completely too obtuse to be understood by the player, so they just keep getting blindsided by attacks that don't even seem like they're possible coming out of the monster that they're being launched from. What Capcom should have done with this boss fight and this set piece was cut it down, get away from just making it a sprawling mess of elements, pare it down to what you need, and just focus on implementing them very well in a challenging, satisfying way and not over the top difficult. Like this should have been an epic moment. Like this was the nemesis fight on a flaming roof in the middle of the zombie apocalypse. Like last stand, this is the only thing that we have left and it's the only chance that we have to get out of the city. Before Raccoon City is completely obliterated into rubble as an attempt by Umbrella to falsely get away from the zombie apocalypse, of course it's going to spread. Umbrella thinking that they could do anything about it to atomize the entire apocalypse away is just stupid, but then again we're talking about Umbrella here who's all about short-term gains at the expense of any sort of long-term intelligence they had left, if they had any to start with. 